Hi everybody, I'm Yael. I am a yoga teacher within Sibley's Oncology Support Programs. And today's practice is meant to um, get you up and moving. Uh, a good practice to do at any time of the day, but especially in the morning. We'll be starting on the ground and you're welcome to substitute your bed for the ground. And then we'll be coming to standing. So I've just set myself up here with a yoga mat and I've just got uh, a blanket and a couple of blocks. Um, so if you've got those things, great. And if you don't, no worries at all. We'll just start on our backs. Oh, and feel free to make sound effects like that. And also just feel free to rock a little bit here from side to side. I'm just gently cupping my knees and rocking from side to side so I could get a little massage on my back. You're welcome to take the knees either close together or far apart. And as you're doing this, maybe you're already beginning to get a little bit more into the breath. Just taking a few deep breaths. Noticing the quality of the air around you, the temperature. If the air feels stagnant or if it's moving. And you might also notice the texture of the clothes on your skin. Good. Let's release our left foot down to the ground. We could interlace the hands and either take them on the shin or under the knee. And either keep the left leg bent or you're welcome to straighten it if that feels okay for you. And again, you could kind of rock back and forth. In fact, sometimes I sort of act like my leg is a little bit of a volleyball. And I just go back and forth. I tend to be stiff in the mornings, and so gentle movement is great, as is really lengthening those exhales and inhales. Hmm. Good. Whenever you're ready, we could switch to the other side. Feel free to, again, just rock. Have that right leg bent or, or straight. Eyes can be soft or gently closed. in just momentarily let's extend the arms out to the side and we could go ahead and drop both knees over to one side now if that feels like too much you might want to have a block or a pillow just underneath those knees so really allowing this to feel good arms can be uh, out like wings. Sometimes I just will take the right hand and just lightly lay it on the left thigh. Left arm up and overhead. And as I take some deep breaths, I notice that my literally heart is open right now. This is a little bit of a chest opener. I can feel it as a stretch in my hips. And it's also a spinal twist. With my heart relatively open, I might set an intention for the day, thinking about the quality of energy I would like to embody today. Could be something simple like patience or kindness. I might choose to be loving today. And then I'll come up 
nice and easily. Maybe shift my hips to the right while the knees go over to the left. I'll find something that feels good in my arms. And by the way, keeping shoulders low is also super cool. Really noticing my back body here, how the right shoulder blade is nesting into the earth, which always supports us. Even through challenges, there's a steadiness that I might be able to find in the law of gravity in the rhythm of the seasons in which I find myself in that smooth rhythm of my breath. Good. I'll come back up to center. I'm going to take my hips at about the center. Now, you don't need a block for this, but if you have a block, I'm going to encourage you to put it just between the lower thighs and then walk your ankles directly under the knees. We're going to, this just kind of reminds us to hug our uh, knees in towards one another, which will activate through the inner legs. And we're going to start with a dynamic bridge here. So my arms are alongside the body. On my next inhale, I'm gonna lift my hips and if it's okay for your shoulders, I'll also lift my arms up. On an exhale, I'll come on down. And just like that, we're just gonna do this a few times. Inhaling, maybe squeezing the glutes and exhaling. And inhaling. And exhaling. Nice. And then keep your arms down. Lift the hips on up. Again, the block can be there or not. I could be holding on to the sides of a mat or I could be bending my arms, palms facing one another. And I could be still or I could be doing a little U shape. So rocking my hips to the right, then hovering through center rocking to the other side. So it's almost like I'm rocking my pelvis in a hammock. I could almost feel the warm breeze on my face. Awesome. Let's come all the way down. Remove the block. Heel toe your feet as wide as your mat. And then let's take both legs over towards the right. So just a kind of different kind of twist. Come on up. Both knees come over to the left. Good. Come on up. Let's keep those feet wide. For some of us, this is a much more comfortable position for bridge. And we'll lift the hips on up. Again, any position. Some of us might even feel comfortable interlacing the hands below the back. That's fine. Good, one more inhale here. On an exhale, I'll invite you to release. We could bring our knees directly over our hips. I like to take my arm straight and just lightly tap through um, my knees. And I'm just kind of scooching my low back onto the ground. We're just gonna do three rounds of something for the core. So inhale here, on your next exhale, let's tap either the toe or the heel far away from your set bones. Come on back. We'll tap that left heel down, come on back. All the while I'm really thinking about keeping my low back on the ground. I'll do the right 
and then I'll do the left. That was my second round. Good. And then just one more. My hands just ensure I don't cheat and that I keep the knees far away. We could either do three more just like that, or we could come and as you tuck that right heel or toe, you lift that right arm up and overhead. Left arm comes up and overhead, waking up through the core. Two more just like that. Working very slow. Good, last one. And remember, totally fine if it's just the legs. Also totally fine if you've had enough and you just want to squeeze in the knees. Good, we're all going to do that now. Just kind of squeezing one last time. Let's float over through fetal position and come on up. So we're going to come into a seat. Um, so I recognize that this might, this might not be great for everyone because of the way that the left knee is folded back, but this is a wonderful exercise for those of us who have low back issues. One possibility is you can take a blanket under that left knee and see how that feels. Another possibility is we do the movement is actually just to come to a seat or come to the edge of your bed. Um, this has been something that's been life-changing for my back. So I have my right leg in front, my left leg is bent back behind me. I'm gonna take my right fingertips to the side and I'm gonna bring my hand, I don't know, to about mid-thigh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this whole left thigh bone towards the upper right diagonal of the room, and then I'm gonna come back. So it's just a very small movement. What we're actually doing in the back of the body is you have a bone called the sacrum, which is shaped like this, like an inverted triangle or pyramid. And there's, um, on both sides of those triangles, you have ligaments, it's called the sacral iliac joint, the iliac crest are sort of the butterfly bones. And for a lot of us, this is where we get into problems, maybe because of too much sitting. And so this gentle movement can really uh, be a game changer. just to bring a little bit more mobility back to those hips. Good, let's just do maybe two more right here. Awesome. And then let's just take a nice little twist here. You can either stay high or you can come on down for a few breaths. You could also move a little bit here. Hmm. Awesome. Let's come up, put more of your weight on the right side. We'll straighten through this left leg. Now I like to have, we're gonna come into a side bend. I like to have a block behind my left knee where I rest my elbow, but you might just want to catch hold of your left shin. And just kind of waking up through that, especially that right side waist. You're welcome to look down or to the side. And only if it feels good, maybe we could just draw a few big circles with right arm. Good. And then let's come all the way up, lean back, take your feet mat width apart, wider than your hips. And we're just gonna rock and roll a little bit, windshield wiper. 
If you want, you could keep your hands grounded. You're also welcome to come into any other variety of this that feels good. Good. And then the next time the knees come over towards the left, we'll just come into that other position and we'll rock this right femur towards the upper left hand corner of your space. Going a little bit slower than you want. We're moving one side of the hips at a time when we do this. Good, let's do one more. And then with that right glute up, Let's walk both hands over to the left. Stay high or come on down. Stay still or move. Yoga is really all about what you need in each day. Our bodies are constantly changing from a zygote. <laughs> to a fetus, to an infant, toddler, child, teenager, adult, right? We've had this, we haven't had the same body our whole lives. And then of course, through things like illness and surgery, some of our um, treatments will also change our brains, our bodies, our nervous system. And so, and so will the seasons. We don't feel the same in the winter as we do in the spring. And so really fine tuning your practice, depending on what's happening with you each and every day. That's advanced yoga. I've straightened out my right leg. And now I'm just gonna come into this side bend. And again, you're welcome to keep this left arm down or we could just do three big circles here. Whew. Awesome. And then let's come on up, come into a comfortable seated position. And let's just circle around. Good, three circles in the opposite direction. Awesome. We're gonna come to hands and knees. This is where it might feel extra delicious to have a carpet or padding. And again, we're going to just do some circles here. So the first circle we're going to do is take your knees a little bit wider than your hips and take your hands a little bit wider than your shoulders. And I'm going to circle clockwise. So first, I'm going to take my hips towards my left ankle, then my right, my right wrist, and then the left. And you could have the toes tucked under or be on the tops of the feet. I'm just gonna do a few circles in this direction. And then the minute I get back to that left heel, I'm gonna circle in the opposite. I guess that was counterclockwise and now I'm going clockwise. If I had, say, a pencil in, on my belly button, in my belly button, and I was drawing a circle on the ground. Good. And now let's come through center. My knees are going to come under the hip bones, and my wrist can come either under the shoulders or just in front. And I'm going to come into barrel roll. So I'm going to do circles as though I'm looking down to protect my neck. 
but it's as though I have a pencil now in the crown of my head and I'm drawing a circle. Three in one direction, and then three in the other. Awesome. And then I'm going to bring my, um, my knees even a little bit closer. I actually want to spin around so you can see what I'm going to do with my right leg first. I'm going to lift up through my right knee and do very slow circles. Now, the key to this is also really holding your core solid. And I'm going a little bit slower than I want. This is three in one direction and three in the other. This should be turning on the muscles of your core, your hips, and your glutes. Awesome. And we're just gonna do three more in the other direct, in the, with the other leg. So going nice and slow as we start to wake up. all of those muscles which will support us. There's a Turkish proverb that says, uh, better to strengthen your back than lighten your load. So that's part of what my aim was for today's practice. Good, let's go ahead, just rest for a moment in child's pose. You don't have to put your head on the ground. You also don't have to come down all the way. Just see what feels good. Feels good for me to have my palms up today. Good, and then I'm gonna come up through my down dog. Now, a few ways to do down dog. It often feels much better to have a couple of blocks underneath your hands. You tuck your toes under and then press your legs back so that there's not too much weight, right, on the Wrist. So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is just to come up to standing. I've got a bookshelf here, so I can either go to the higher level or the lower level, walk myself away. If your bed is tall enough, you can also do your downward facing dog there. Good, and then come all the way up to standing. <laughs> I noticed that the top of my head gets a little bit cut off. Okay, so from here, now that we're in standing, we can move our blanket out of the way. And we're just gonna do a little bit of shaking here. So you could always just shake with one leg or the other or with the whole body. You don't have to look at the camera. You could close your eyes. This is a wonderful way to release uh, stress, even trauma. A lot of um, neuroscience is pointing to trauma being held in the fascia, which is the connective tissue. The cute way of saying it is the issues are in the tissues. And by doing this, which is called shaking the tree in Qigong, we could really begin to release. Good, now let's pause either mountain pose in yoga or you could take uh, right hand on the lower belly for women or left hand on the lower belly for men and then the opposite hand on top. Soft gaze or eyes closed just to feel what you're feeling. Good, let's step those feet a little bit wider apart and come into what's either called empty coat sleeves or knocking at the tree of life. You can gaze straight ahead or feel free to let your vision go. You could keep your hands just kind of coming around the waist or make fist and tap shoulder and opposite kidney. Kidneys are considered to be 
the gateways to life where, where some of our ener life force energy is stored. And you could go as fast as feels good or as slow. <sighs> Come through center again. You could either take a mountain pose or bring your hands to the lower belly. Mm -hmm. And then finally, let's just do a little bit of a massage. So just right, I'm, I'm just coming down so you could see what I'm doing. I'm just tapping all along the scalp. Forehead now. You could do this really lightly. Temple, underneath the eyes, along the jawline. Good, come onto your neck and like you're rubbing a cat. <laughs> Just go gently upward. And then I could tap right around the collarbones. I could do one fist and just tap right on the thymus. And in fact, I could take my just one hand out. I could tap towards the palm on the inside and then back the hand shoulder. And I could repeat that two more times. Come back through center and then switch to the other side. Good. Take your fingertips again and just tap right here, kind of like under armpit. Good. And we're just going to uh, Take both hands, rub your belly. I'm doing nine circles today in one direction, and then we're gonna do nine in the opposite. Good, then I'm gonna make fist. I'm just going to start right by the outside of my hips. I'm going to go down the leg, over the foot, and up the inner leg through the groin. And I'm just going to repeat that two more times. Again, I'm gonna pause here, bring my intention for the day back to mind. Really feeling the energy that I've cultivated for my day. Calm alertness. We could bring our hands together at the heart center with gratitude always for the space that we share. To one another, we bow. Thank you so much for spending time with me this morning or afternoon.